Hi everyone, Bob Mayskoma here from Muskie's Making Sense of It and all the folks at Simply Fishing. You know, fishermen are guilty of what we call anthropomorphic thinking or attributing human characteristics to animals. It's a known fact that humans and fish alike need food, cover, and protection from their enemies. However, our needs and surroundings greatly differ and that's why it's not always easy to figure out what to do in a given situation if you were a fish. You know, if I had a dime for every time someone told me, Bob, you catch so many big fish simply because you think like one, I'd be wealthy and I wouldn't be worried about the current price of gas. The truth is, I don't think That's like a fish. Here. Instead, I understand how they think and relate in the environment. <laughs> Let me get a little closer. One more. All right, great All right. fish, Bob. Well, let me get her back. All right. Look at that head. She's 54 inches. Yeah, she's a pig. She is a pig. Really healthy, though. Look at how big that fish is. Yeah, she's really girthy. Just, uh, just a horse. <laughs> My wife's still trying to figure out if we're fishing for pigs or horses. I'd say about 54. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's gorgeous. She could be 54 and a half. She might Let's start off by trying to understand some of the anatomy of a muskie. We'll start by looking at the lateral line. We consider the lateral line to be a long-range sensory organ for the muskie. I ask, is this what you're looking for? Okay, here we go. Picture yourself on your favorite muskie water with almost every element perfect. For your presentation, you've chosen, in this case, the awaker in hopes of success. Your reason for choosing the awaker was past experiences and some knowledge of the positive sounds created by a well-tuned awaker. All the while, you're being very cautious, knowing that every movement you make in your boat sends negative sounds through the water disturbing the stealth environment of the muskie. Every sound in the water is being received by the muskie through its lateral line, both positive and negative alike. Because of this detection device, she can detect your presence from as far away as a thousand feet if you create a ruckus. Because the lateral line runs the entire length of the body, one could expect that it actually gains sensitivity as the fish grows and ages. Picture, if you will, a simple concept of an old satellite dish. The larger the dish, the more efficient it was at receiving a signal. Well, the same concept is true for the muskie and her lateral line. The lateral line is located on the upper one-third of the portion of the fish and again runs continuous from the tail right to below the cheek pad of the fish. The most sensitive part of the lateral line lies just beneath the eye on the upper portion of the gill plate itself. The lateral line is an incredibly sensitive organ and should not be taken for granted. When you are blessed with a situation that having the mighty muskie in your presence, we ask that you take caution as not to damage this important organ on the side of the fish. Smile. There you go. Notice in just a second as we put this muskie back in the water, a roll which indicates where that lateral line is actually located on approximately the upper one-third portion of the fish's back. In just a second, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as the light reflects off the side of this 50-inch class muskie. Nice fish. Good, clean release, too. There's the lateral line. See the indentation? That's what we're talking about. Let's examine the lateral line in even greater detail because it's important to understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about this organ on the fish. As I said earlier, it runs the entire length of the main body of the fish. And especially right below the eye, that's where we've got to be careful with this fish. It's at this point it's considered that the lateral line signal is transmitted most directly to the brain. You know, fish position themselves along breaks, edges, weed lines, and what have you as to take best advantage of the available sound that's being transmitted through the water. Think about how a fish will position itself along these weed beds, fallen trees, boulders, rock piles, or edges, and use that when you place your cast. Here again, classic example, perfect condition, slight chop, great weed bed, post cold front condition, we know the fish are in there. Bring in the right noise caused by this giant jackpot, and you will be eaten. This is what we're all dreaming of right here. Very few things on the earth rival the explosion and excitement of a giant muskie in the 40-pound-plus class eating a surface lure. 
At no other time during musky fishing do you have such contact with what's going on with the fish. Think about this when you choose surface lures. The appropriate sound, the positive sound, the kind of sound you're looking for is created by some of the best surface lures on the planet, the Awaker and the Giant Jackpot. Net. Net. Yep, net. Yeah. Let's take a look at the lateral line even closer and identify exactly what it does. It picks up slight vibrations that move tiny hairs in pores along the lateral line itself. Even the slightest movement in the environment of the muskie will cause water to be shifted. As this water shifts in that environment, it creates literally sound waves that are detected by these small hairy pores along the side of the muskie itself. This is what we're looking for, folks. And trust me, okay. she has a sensitive oh, lateral line. Way. Okay, I'm going to get this fish back. Ooh, Bob. What a beautiful fish. Think about the lateral line as not only being an aid for the fish to feed, but also CPR. an aid for the fish yeah, to elude your presence. The next what time you're on the water, fish. be a little cautious, Maybe use some common sense, choose the right surface lures, and you'll catch big fish. Some vibrations detected by the lateral line are transmitted directly to the inner ear, low frequency versus high frequency. Here we'll examine the posed giant jackpot, incredible lure, low frequency by our determination, and quite frankly, very effective, because that low frequency sound is heard through the water for a greater distance than that of a medium or a high frequency. Odyssey Lures came out with a new lure called the Pig. It creates a low frequency lure in the form of the original non-talking version. The Talking Pig becomes a medium frequency lure. Very productive. Think about using rattling lures when the attitude of the fish may be higher. Folks, this is the Awaker, responsible for my former 56 inch world record release and quite frankly the most productive medium frequency lure we throw. This lure is incredible on calm and calmer type surfaces. You're not going to go fishing, folks, without throwing at least some kind of blade bait. Stanley Musky Boss Spinner Bait from the folks in Huntington, Texas, creates a high to a medium frequency depending on the blades. Let's take a look at vision for just a second. We call it a medium range sensory, but the truth is, vision's very important in how the fish will react. The eye of the muskie is one of the most important organs, as well as one of the most fragile. Folks, when you have this fish out of the water, think about drying that outer membrane on that eye. You will create problems for the fish in the future cataracts and other visual problems will hinder this fish's ability to feed. The eye of the muskie is thought to have more rods than cones. Rods are light receptors and cones are color receptors. What does that mean to you? That means the fish is a low light predator and can distinguish color. Here we are in a situation where I've got a dark overcast conditions. The old rule of thumb is dark bay, dark day. I don't believe that. I like to throw loud, bright colors, something that breaks the laws of nature because that low frontal system coming in is going to peak the activity level of that muskie. I want her to see my presentation. And quite frankly, because of this effort, I have caught numbers of huge fish during times and with lures that most common anglers are being taught not to throw. Here I'm throwing a chartreuse bandit pig by Odyssey, and trust me, this 50-inch class fish had no problem taking advantage of this offering over this reefy, rocky area that we had chosen to fish. And sharing this adventure with me, Matt Kircher, a young man from Ohio, that was a guest on one of our shoots. Matt's one of those kind of anglers that was kind of like 14 going on 40, if you know what I mean. Matt was warned all week not to have, well, lures thrown out over the back of the boat, well, and then when he picked up the net, he picked up about 90 lures with it. Let's enjoy Matt Kircher now as we put this 50-inch class fish That's in the boat in a condition yeah. where most people are throwing a dark lure. I almost got the grandma out. Yeah. It's really close if it's not. Oh. Okay. Let's take a look at the giant jackpot. It comes in a wide variety of colors these days. You notice the blue and silver. I probably throw the blue and silver more than any other color that I throw. The truth is, it makes very little difference. What we're trying to do here is create the appropriate or a positive type commotion on the surface to attract that fish to come up and eat it. There are times when you might want to cast more silhouette. There are times when you might want more flash. 
That's why there's a variety of colors in the Poe's Giant Jackpot. These are the three that I would go to the water without any question. Here's the Odyssey line, the pig. I'm telling you, these are the most lifelike representations on some of these lures that I've ever seen. The chartreuse and the orange bandit are two of my favorite colors in those low light situations. If you're in clear situations, take a look at some of the natural colors. They're incredible. Comes in a suspending version, comes in an original version, comes in rattled and unrattled. A new lure and soon to be one of the hottest jerk baits on the planet today. And folks, you can take it from me. You might ought to check out your retailer and the new pig from Odyssey Lures. And here we've got the Stanley Pike and Musky Boss Spinnerbait, one and a half and two and a half ounce version. The silicone skirted spinnerbait is quite frankly incredible. With the wedge Colorado blades and the willow leaf blades, you'll find this to be very productive. While shooting the commercial for Stanley, we put a 40 pound class fish in the boat during the shooting of that commercial. Folks, check it out. The Stanley Pike and Musky Boss Spinnerbait from the folks at Huntington, Texas. You're not going to go to the water, and I don't care where you go, without a wide variety of top water lures. Here we're talking about the Awaker from Pose. I created this lure back in the mid-80s, and quite frankly was astonished by the size and quality of the fish we've caught on this lure. Very mechanically intense, and you're going to have to learn how to retune the tail after a 30, 40, or 45 pound, or maybe a 50 pound fish. But who cares? When you're catching 35, 40, or 50 pound fish, I'll tune tails all day long. This lure is mechanically intense, incredible in extreme steady conditions and flat surfaces. She's free too. Okay, that's good. Okay. The way her lines are on That's all right. Lift her up. Ooh. Oh, oh man, that's a nice fish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's what we came here yeah. for. <laughs> that's what we came here for. <laughs> We're gonna be on those rocks in just a second, okay? Nah, that's all right. I'm gonna get it right back down. It was all right to Matt because he didn't pay 30 grand for oh. that ranger. That's about a 51. That's a 51, 52. Right in there. Nice fish. <sighs> oh, easy that. She's a fat one too. Yeah, easy 52. Oh, look at her. Is that gorgeous? That is a beautiful fish. Yeah, that is gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, see those worms out there? Let's take a look at exactly what a muskie sees or how it perceives vision in its own environment. In a clear water situation, you can expect the muskie to see six times or more than what you can looking into the water. In stained water situations, five to six times greater. In dark water situations, five times or less. Muskies will tend to be more active for longer periods of time in off-colored water conditions. You can place your bets on that, folks. We have many times. The most important area to put that lure is in an area we call the strike zone. We identified this strike zone a couple of years ago in a video entitled The Strike Zone. And quite frankly, it is the reason we catch so many fish. We have developed an understanding for what we're talking about. Look to place your lure about 20 to 26 inches in front of a 50-inch class fish. Approximately one-half length of the fish is where the actual strike zone will be. We're not talking about a focal length zone here. We're not talking about a binocular or a monocular length zone. We're talking about the strike zone the area that you're going to trigger that fish. In a figure eight situation, when you start to wrap the lure back over the top of the head of the fish, try to make that turn approximately 20 to 26 inches in front of a 50 inch class fish. Taste, in and of itself, a very interesting concept and a short range sensory for the muskie. It's important because folks, there's something you're going to need to understand. Over the last decade and a half of shooting our television show and over the last two decades of preaching muskie fishing, we have never once gone to live bait. Why, you say? Well, for a number of reasons, but here's the best. Scientists are in the belief that physiologically what happens to a fish when it consumes live bait is much different than what happens to it when it consumes artificial bait. Let me identify. What we're talking about here is the physiological effect of the acids being emitted to the digestive system of that muskie upon receiving live bait across the palate of that fish. In a situation where we have a fast-bursting, hard-fighting fish such as a muskie, it's more advantageous to it's reduce like as many of the yep. harmful factors in catching and releasing that fish down. as we okay. possibly can. So in that way. same vein, if we're using artificial bait and it crosses the taste That's buds of that fish, none of the physiological effects of those acids being emitted to that stomach will take place. 
that fish's system is not tripped with artificial lures. If you are indeed a catch and release fisherman, or if you simply want to go have fun and make sure you leave the resource in better or as good a condition as you found it, think twice about going to the water with live bait. Today we have such companies as Berkeley creating products that quite frankly are more effective than anything we've had in the past decade of muskie fishing. There are times when natural baits might seem to be outperforming some of the artificials, but you have to look at it from an ethical situation. Do you want to catch and release the fish? or do you simply want to catch the fish? This is something you're going to have to decide for yourself. Yeah, uh, hooked in and out. Yeah. He's really nailed. Really nailed. Here we are with a single hook and a Berkeley Power Lizard. Super effective presentation for spring and fall situations in most of our natural lakes that we fish. Thank you. Gentleman I'm fishing with, Mike Hohen, is the creator of the jig that's in the mouth of that fish right there. Studies will show the fish can determine the authenticity of objects entering their mouth in a split second, faster than you can blink. This is where the system rejects the offering. The operative here, folks, is rejects. Bad at home. Tasty fish. You want to have a lot of fun? Easy to catch this and release. Easy on the fish's condition. So cold Try some jig and lizard Boy, fishing, spring and fall. I know it. Let's talk about taste, because over 450,000 sensory glands line the mouth of a predator, such as the muskie. Amino acid composition is partly responsible for the distinctive smell and odor of all plants and animals as we know them on Mother Earth today. And the folks at Berkeley, they've got an incredible handle on what they're doing with the scent, additives, and attractions that they're putting in the soft plastics they're making down at Berkeley. We throw a lot of Berkeley product because it works. Let's take a look at smell. Although it's a short range sensory, we're finding it to be very acute in cold water situations. Let's identify how it works in the fish's environment. Notice the weed bed we have, rocky bottom. Every time that muskie swims through as simple as the water itself, it's depositing a footprint of its odor. When it comes in contact with vegetation or the bottom, you can bank there will be some sort of marking indicating whether it's a prey or a predator fish that has come through this area. Fish utilize this sense of smell to identify prime areas to feed. Fluids in the muskie's environment enter the anterior nostril and exit the posterior nostril. Let's take a closer look at exactly what we're talking about. Here we see a diagram identifying the anterior nostril entry. As it enters the olfactory system, it comes in contact with the olfactory folds. At this point, it comes in contact with receptor cells, which will identify the various scents that are being transmitted into the olfactory system. They are then transmitted to the brain where, I, where they are identified as being real or artificial. Muskies with favorite forages can more than likely distinguish the odors of their chosen prey, and they can change their mind. Face it, folks, one day muskies can be eaten on whitefish, the next day they'll be eaten on suckers. What that tells you is they have the ability to choose forage based on the scent or smell that they determine or detect in the watery environment. That's good cabbage. Remember we talked about the vegetation and how the scents are rubbed off in the vegetation? Notice that we talked just there about the cabbage, and then boom, instant hook set. There are many times that I've been on the water. One case in point, fishing with John Hale from Stanley Lures. While we were fishing muskies, we hit five weed beds and never saw a fish. Although I smelled the vegetation that was hooked on my lure each and every time. On the sixth weed bed that we were fishing, I pulled up vegetation, smelled the vegetation, and I could sense oh, by the smell that there were musky present in the area. Fish, huh? John, in disbelief, smelled it and could obviously smell the difference between the two areas. Folks, fish do exactly the same thing. However, if we use our little bit of sense of smell, check the vegetation, you might be catching more fish than you ever dreamt possible. We caught a number of fish out of a single weed bed numerous times by doing just that. There again, single hook, talking about the Berkeley Power Lizard. This is a situation where we'll oftentimes go to our seven-foot rods. You don't often see us throw seven-foot rods. We'll lighten down our lines, go to the modified banana head jig that Mike Hohen created, put the Berkeley Power Lizard on it, and really have a lot of fun with these smaller fish. In most cases, you won't see fish in the 50-inch class, although 
10, 15 a day is possible. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh. I mean, My they don't even goodness. have to be rock a huge fish. No. On this lighter tackle like this, they are just a riot. It's a great what fall a and spring bite, there. guys. Check it out. You'll have a lot of fun. Hey, gals, and check again, it out, too. Boom. Pick right off. There she goes. <laughs> In cold conditions, the sense of smell may be the final triggering sense. This is incredibly important. What you're about to see here is a 45 to 50 pound class muskie. You don't think I'm not shaking at the knees? Well, I got news for you. This happens many times, especially in cold water situations where we can't seem to trip that fish away from the boat. And they'll come on in in total disbelief, follow figure eight time after time after time, open their mouth only a couple of inches each time. Folks, what they're doing is smelling and tasting this lure at the same time. The smell that's on the lure, quite frankly, might be the final triggering device. However, under most situations, you're not capable of adding a scent, especially after visually sighting this type of predator. In most cases, the fish will disappear, not to be seen again very quickly, if ever at all. And you can't apply scent on every cast. Barometric pressure, well, it has incredible effects on the fish, and they're important for us to understand. And here's what we're going to talk about, barometric pressure. Folks, in a high sky, go shallow, go to the weeds, catch big fish. That's exactly what we did in this incredibly high sky condition with this former world record release of 56-inch long muskie. Notice the vegetation there in front? That's because this fish is literally pulling my bass boat through this weed bed as we speak. There are a couple of different factors that people should pay attention to in a high barometric pressure system. One, if you're in clear water systems, you can expect that fish to go to deeper water for sanctuary. That's quite common. However, if you have access to off-colored water, you can also expect that fish to climb into the thickest junkyard vegetation possible and call it home. This is where you take out lures like the Giant Jackpot, the Awaker, the Stanley Muskie Boss Spinnerbait, and probe those areas. Look for open, open pockets and channels that you can pull lures through, and you will get bit. I'll say this about high barometric pressure systems and weed beds. Take advantage of them early in the morning and toward the later part of the day part. Go in and look these areas over during the high sky situation and try to find areas that may hold that super fish. I gotta quit shaking. This is a pig fish. I don't believe this is a, this is an absolute pig fish. This fish right here is 56 inches long. We just measured her in the bottom of the boat, and I gotta put her back. Release her. Let her go, Bobby. Oh. Oh. That's a king of the freshwater, right there. No better. Work her nice and slow. It's important to understand oh some of the biology that Dr. John Schneider, my guest in the boat, is about to talk about. Look at him. Oh, come on, baby. Your belly up just a little bit, Bob. Come on, baby. There you go. 56 inches. Oh. Come on. I thought those fish last year were a fish of a lifetime, Bobby. I think this one out does it. This one does it. Oh, she's starting to get power. Yeah. I can feel her. This is an absolute gorgeous fish. Johnny, this is why we put big fish back, right? Absolutely. Those 40 and 45 inches you put back? Yeah. If you keep taking those fish out of the resource, you'll never get another fish this big. Now, a fish this old, I mean, this big has got to be 35, 38 years? Yeah. Well over 20 years. Well over 20 years. And it's in its Let's identify the portion of the anatomy of the fish that affects its location due to the barometric pressure change, the swim bladder. It's a fact, even minor changes in barometric pressure can affect the musky swim bladder. This air-filled sac is to a fish what the inner ear is to a human. With a rapid rise in pressure, the fish exhibits difficulty maintaining balance, thus affecting their attitude and their location. Folks, in situations in high barometric pressure, you can affect the attitude of the fish and the location severely. In dark water situations, I stress, go shallow into the vegetation. In high sky conditions and clear water situations, you can expect those fish to drop into a little bit deeper water. However, high pressure conditions may not be your favorite choice time of year to fish. With that being said, take advantage of some of the movement in nature that indicates a change in barometric pressure. 
We don't today, as we speak, have any kind of gauge or instrumentation that's really effective for following this trend out in the natural environment. However, a little bit of visual observation will teach you how to do it. If you've got a front or a slight wind coming out of the southeast or out of the south, you can almost expect without question you'll have the appropriate or the right kind of barometric pressure change coming. This is a warm front. In a short time, you'll probably have a cloud front coming in on you, but it'll be from the north or the northwest. It's that warming trend coming from the south that will trip these fish. After the cold front goes through, you'll have a three to four day period and this whole cycle will start all over again. That's under normal situations, and quite frankly, we haven't had normal situations for a couple of years. In a situation like this, I like to take advantage of spinnerbaits. The Stanley Pike and Muskie Bow spinnerbait is an incredible choice. As the attitude of these fish are starting to come up, not yet peaked, but starting to rise, you can take a blade bait and be very effective. Choose rocky saddle areas with vegetation adjacent to these rocky areas. The fish will pull off the rocky edges at some times during the high pressure system, but as soon as that she change comes, you can she expect that they'll come right into the vegetation, and a spinnerbait is incredibly effective. <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do. Just stand right there. I'm going to hand you my rod. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hand it to you. I'm going to put three spools on the reel. I'm going to hand grab her. You ready free spool? Not yet. Okay. Too big to get across the back. <laughs> what a nice fish. This is just one of the many hints and tips that we'll be giving you on this video and in other presentations that we do that teach you how to predict when that frontal system is going to change. You will catch more fish, folks, by simply relaxing some of our efforts out there, taking advantage of the natural senses we have, and predict some of the movements before they actually take place. Musky boss has history in there, isn't it? Can I get a Polaroid? Sure, Barry. It's a, not a very heavy fish, but it's a lot longer fish than I thought it was. Beautiful fish. That's what we're looking for. Beautiful fish. I'll get her back, okay? Yes. Notice the clouds over my back? That was one of the leading indicators that told us this front was coming. We had three days of incredibly high skies prior to this, and when those clouds came in, well, you can almost predict the rest. In high pressure, you can expect the muskie to use deep water or heavy vegetation, less likely to be active even in the darker water, more active at dawn and dusk. In steady pressure, the fish will tend to be more active and will relate to points and breaks. Look to use baits with flash and soft rattles at this time. In low pressure, well, she'll be shallow, and when I say she, I mean the monsters. The shallows will be alive as the entire ecosystem thrives in these conditions. This is that one time you want to be on the water prepared to catch the fish of a lifetime. And you will do it. Here we are, only 50 yards away from where we caught the last fish. As my guest, as an absolute time, Jim Gracca, as the front came on in, things got better. We didn't change lures. We barely changed location, and Jim had an opportunity of a fish of a lifetime. However, if you listen to what's said and watch this video, you understand that Jim barely had hooks in this fish. Watch as the fish comes to the net, and you'll see what I'm talking about. That's because the fish really wasn't turned on. However, we had an understanding and a knowledge, and we took advantage of that and was able to trip the fish. She actually took a look at a giant jackpot prior to fall into this musky, musky boss spinnerbait. However, the rest is history. It's Jim's Superfish. She's mine. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Ooh, smash all you want, babe. You're mine. You got a 50 incher. No. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> 40. Oh! Get out of oh! <laughs> no man. Holy moly. <laughs> You've got one there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <sighs> You got a 50 plus. <laughs> and he thought I breathe hard, huh? What do you think of that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sweet. Sweet. It don't get no sweeter.
Okay, let's put it back. Okay, can you grab one of mine? Just one quick shot right there. Just okay. go right on it. As if I was going to say no, right? Hey, this is a fish of a lifetime for Jim. Okay. We're proud of that fish and the fact okay, that she's okay. still swimming. She went away healthy. Okay, Although the tail was torn up a little bit, it wasn't knees, from us. This fish there. had been caught and released oh, ahead nice of us, job. which is great. <laughs> so grab her by the tail. You want to hold on her by the tail. Okay, now don't let her go until she's ready. You might want to lay right on your belly and just kind of resuscitate her a little bit. Okay. Frontal systems from the north or the northwest will be faster moving and more severe. This will cause a sharper movement in the attitude curve of the muskie. Fronts from the south or the southeast will be less harmful to the muskie's attitude and location. Fact is, they might even create a little positive movement in the fish's location and attitude alike. Hey, take advantage of some of this knowledge and catch some big fish. You know something, folks? I take this pride in showing you the biggest fish I have ever had on hook, line, or otherwise. And quite frankly, bigger than any fish I've ever seen on any wall. Oh, big fish. Big fish. I only got one hook in it. Nothing to say. <laughs> I got here as quick as I could, too. You never got close to me. <laughs> well, I really do have one thing more to say. Muskies have many senses. They have a lateral line, a sense of hearing, a sense of sight, a sense of taste, a sense of smell. Learn to use them. And, folks, most of all, learn to use our senses. They're known as the common sense. Have fun. God bless. Have fun on the water. And remember, when you're out there, practice CPR, catch, boat, and release. To do so, you can have your graphite reproduction created from artistic anglers in Duluth, Minnesota. Call 1-800-544-7466 for details. 1-800-544-7466.